We're uh, we're growing about eight percent this year. We're uh, it, depending on the time of year, we're flying anywhere from twenty three to twenty seven times a day. So it's uh, we've got a very robust schedule in Hawaii, and it's it's doing well. At this point, that isn't a strategy that we're pursuing. It's not something we're looking at. <laughs> Um, I think Hawaiian does a good job. W one of the things we are aware of is that uh, when there have been two or three or four airlines in that inner island market, it's been tough. Conditions have been tough. But uh, right now, we're more interested in just sort of flying off the, as I said, off the west coast of the United States to uh, Honolulu and to the neighbor islands. You know, we, we don't... Um, pre-announce that sort of thing. What, what I would say is I think we're growing in Hawaii about 8% this year. That's actually lower than uh, most of the last several years. But I, I, would, I would anticipate some modest level of growth for the next few years. We certainly understand that there is a big income inequality issue in our country and there's a big income inequality issue in Seattle. And what I would say is that we're trying very hard to be on the right side of that issue and to be bringing, uh, to be offering, offering good jobs to our people and more importantly to be doing the things so that um, like whether it's a ramp service agent or a fueler or what have you, uh, trying to set our company up so that those folks can have a good career ladder and move into jobs that are higher skilled and higher paid and better, better standard of living and so forth. So we're doing well. We, we have made some changes. We've uh, basically asked all of our contractors to make their minimum wage $12 an hour, which is compared to the state minimum wage of nine and a half dollars or something like that. And I mean, more the $15 an hour issue specifically, a, a little bit of our feeling about that is that's actually, um, it's, if it's, it applies to the city of SeaTac, Washington, which is an 11 square mile city where Alaska is headquartered. And the, the real way we feel about that is it's, it's just, it's, it's, uh, it, it will affect Alaska Air Group very, very disproportionately to how it affects other airlines. and It'll affect our ability to compete with the other airlines. If, if that was going to be the playing field and every airline dealt with that in every airport, we, we could probably make it work. But we just sort of feel like it's going to be a competitive disadvantage if it's just affecting Alaska and, and not other airlines. Alaska... We, we didn't love doing the baggage fee. We sort of, we were slow to move to, I think it started at $15 and we were slow to move it up. It was a, a move that other folks in the industry did and you sort of come to the perspective that, okay, that's going to be the structure in the industry and we're out there competing hard on fares and to compete on fares and other, someone else got a bag fee and we don't, it puts you at a competitive disadvantage. Having, having said all that, the, the one thing I would say is that there actually is a fair bit of cost involved in handling a bag. If, if you actually think about the airport infrastructure and all the baggage conveyors and all that underneath, the ramp service agents carrying bags out and all that, I, I think the, the costs of handling a bag are somewhat significant. And so sort of what people would say is that the product is becoming unbundled and people that don't want to check a bag don't have to pay for a bag and people that do need to check a bag are, are paying a fee. And importantly, one of the things Alaska is, is doing is we call it a way to free. We're just if, if someone really doesn't want to pay a bag fee, they can get our credit card. They can get the Alaska Airlines credit card, and if they have the credit card, they'll get a free bag with that card. We're actually making investments across the board. Last December, we invested in new seats, slimline seats, and we have seat power. They have new overhead bins and streaming video on board the airplanes. The last six to 12 months, we've been investing in the onboard products, so there's a a chef, Tom Douglas, a Seattle chef, that we've got Tom Douglas featured food in first class and in the main cabin. We've been upgrading the, the, the uh, beverages, food, but not only the food, but the beverages on board the airplane. So I, I think, and honestly, I, I think what we're seeing in our data is our customers are pretty happy right now. Hawaiian's a very good airline. And what they do, they do very well. They're, it's a wide body service typically from Honolulu and into the larger cities on the West Coast and, and throughout the U.S. Alaska's really coming at the market with uh, narrow body airplanes, 737s, typically an 800 from, uh, again, secondary cities off the West Coast. And then we take you not, if you want to go to uh, Kauai, we take you nonstop to Kauai or nonstop to Kona, nonstop to Maui. So it's, it's I, I would, what I would say is uh, each airline is doing what they're probably good at and uh, I think the competition's working working well. You got to compete. You know, it, it's like every, every we have to compete. It's it's uh, 
And we've got to go out there. We've got to offer. We've got to be safe. We've got to be on time. We've got to give our customers great fares. We've got to give them good service. And that competition is what what it does keep the service affordable and it keeps our economy vibrant and growing and so forth. So. If, if and when Southwest comes to the market, there'll be more competition, but we'll, we've competed against Southwest for 25 years and we've competed well against Southwest for 25 years. So it's, uh, I don't know, it's, it's, uh, I don't, I don't want to sort of be too soothing and say it's not going to be a problem, but I think you do have to say competition is a part of life and you, you, I think you have to look at competition as something that's going to make you a better company. So some, sometimes decisions are sort of given to you. I mean, Alaska, we are we have a single fleet of 737s. We don't operate wide body. So we're sort of, so the, the natural thing for us was to look at places, well, where, where would the 737 be a great airplane? And it, it, honestly, probably not so much in SFO or LAX, really large airports. And that airplane does give us the ability to take um, an airplane directly from Seattle to Kauai or something, something like that. Um, what I would also say is Alaska's... Um, We've done well, not, not only in Hawaii, but in, in the U.S. mainland, overflying hubs. So, uh, I mean, if, if a customer has a choice of flying from Seattle nonstop to, let's just say, New Orleans, or flying through a hub to New Orleans, they prefer to go nonstop. And so that, that's been a strategy we've done for 20 years, 20, 25, 30 years. And that's, that's sort of a strategy that we brought to Hawaii. So we'll take people directly from Sacramento to Maui. They don't, it's not a Sacramento with a drive to San Francisco, then on to Honolulu, then Maui. It's, it's nonstop service. And other people have what they do and they do it really well. This is just something that's been working well for us. Now, we were the first airline anywhere in the world to sell a ticket over the internet. So we embraced this thing right out of the gate. I think it was December 1995 and we've been growing nonstop. So today, 60% of our sales are over the internet. One of the, one of the big thing, things about the internet is it's, uh, your pricing is totally transparent. You know, in the old days, if you wanted to fly to Hawaii, you'd call a travel agent and you'd have a little friction. You'd have a, a few minute long conversation where you look at different flights and what are the fares. And today, if you want to fly to Hawaii, you can go onto alaskaair.com or other airlines websites and you can say, I'm willing to go in any of these three days. I'll go home in any of these three days and can you help me find the lowest fares? So it's, it's been a really good thing for consumers. And I think it's actually been a benefit to the airlines that operate with lower fares. And as Joe said earlier, Alaska is one, one of those where uh, 12 of the last 14 quarters, we've had the lowest fares to Hawaii. So I think the internet has benefited uh, airlines like Alaska. Mm -hmm.